Um, okay, so there's a possibility that this won't work out. This is my first time doing it. So we're testing this shit together. Um, okay, so he didn't show me... Did I tell you what I'm doing today? <laughs> so today I am going to be going through the process that I watched. Uh, makeup... Is it Makeup by Ariel or Makeup... Ariel, Ariel, Ariel. Basically Kylie, Kylie Jenner's makeup artist, Ariel. So um, I went to the Makeup Forever Masterclass and he went through basically like how he does skin. It was the um, like launch, I guess, of the new Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation, which is what I'm gonna be using today. But yeah, I wanted to share with you guys like what I learned from him. We're gonna be using powder. I'm like so like scared, but also excited about this whole process because it's so different. I mean, it's not so different. Like honestly, our techniques aren't so far off. There's little things that um, I'm gonna be trying that he does that I haven't done before. Um, and I'm gonna be showing you how he makes his skin look like like airbrushed filter. Uh, hopefully it looks the same on me. I'm slightly skeptical, but we'll see. So I started off with my eyes because he didn't show us eyes. So I don't know what his whole deal is with eyes. Um, and I just wanted to try these colors. This is the Morphe Icy Fantasy palette. This is in collaboration with someone whose name I don't know. Pony something? Sorry, don't know this person, but I'll link it down below. It's super pretty. I'll just show it to you really quickly since we're here. It's all pastels and shit. Isn't that pretty? Love it. So I'm wearing like these colors. Right there. I'm going to be priming my face. Uh, he primed his face before primed. So he did Desi Perkins makeup. Um, so he primed Desi's face ahead of time. I'm just gonna be using sunscreen because I'm hoping that I can get this done <laughs> before the sun goes down and I can get some bomb, you know, direct sunlight photos. So I'm using the Glossier Skin, what's it called? Glossier Skin Shield? Invisible Shield. This is their sunscreen. Um, and I, I sort of like outlined my brows. You guys know I like to finish off my brows like later on. I think he did brows first um, and then he did eyes, but I can't really do that. So this is going to be long. So if you don't want to list, sit here and listen to me talk through all of this, head on out. And I did moisturize with a very hydrating, dewy moisturizer. I don't know what it's called. I think it's PREM or something. I don't know, but I'll link it down below because it's pretty fantastic. Um, all right. And then I'm going to color correct underneath my eyes. You guys know the deal. He didn't do that. What do we think about this background? I think it's better when it's farther away because it gets a little bit more blurry. But I feel like my light isn't, um, so whatever. It doesn't matter. It's so weird being such an introvert and then getting really chatty when I'm alone talking to a camera and I know people are going to see it. But, oh, that's another thing. Okay, so for my under eyes, he, okay, so in my like concealer videos, people were giving me shit for not bringing my concealer like all the way up. I explained the reason that I don't do that is because I do have like these natural creases under my eyes. Like I just have them, right? So product gets caught in there and then it, it can end up looking very like cakey and gross. He took his, now Desi doesn't have that, but he took his concealer like all the way up and I just wanna try to do that and see how it goes. Cause like, we're gonna be putting stuff underneath our eyes, but like eyeshadow obviously, but I just wanna give it a shot. So I'm taking this shit like where the darkness is basically. I'm not gonna try to go in with like a ton of product or anything. We're just, we're gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try things a little bit different. Okay. There's gonna be some products and or steps that I don't go into depth with you about, probably because I've already um, talked about it or it's in a separate video or something. So if you're looking for something super specific, like I've had a lot of brow requests and things like that, I do have those videos. You just gotta like, and they're pretty recent. So I would just like take a quick look through my videos. If you guys uh, request like a specific or any specific playlists to make it a little bit easier, let me know and I can do that for you guys because I always forget to add my shit to playlists. So we're going right up, right up in those wrinkles. I'm just gonna try to make sure that I'm like really tapping that out though. Maybe this is gonna change my whole life. Oh, you know what's really annoying? I So when I was doing my eyes, I, I misted a little bit with some setting spray from Smashbox and I got a little, a little hiccup up in there. So that's upsetting. Anyway, so, um, okay. So he went in with foundation first. So this is very intriguing. I'm super excited about this. 
The only problem is the colors, but we'll get to that. So this is the new foundation from Makeup Forever. They matched me with two shades because this one is Y255 and it's a little bit too dark for me. And then this one is too pink for me. Um, I can't really tell how much it's like picking up on the monitor, but this is R208. This is quite pink, but it's light enough and this is a little too dark. So they matched me with these two to mix for my skin. I tried that a little bit earlier and it was still, it was like too neutral. So I'm gonna mix in my little secret weapon. Um, either my video on this little secret secret is up or it will be up soon, so just keep an eye on that. Anyway, I wanna tell you a little bit about this, about this foundation because I'm so excited about it. So it, it says that it brightens, smooths, firms, hydrates, and evens out. So they were talking about this being like the skincare of foundation. Uh, they were comparing it to like wearing a sheet mask. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> So this is supposed to, I don't have like all of the information. Um, I will link it down below, but it's supposed to have like a bunch of really great ingredients. It says, so this is a reboot, re reboot. Did I say that? Reboot, reboot, blah, 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 blah. reboot foundation. So it's supposed to instantly reverse the effects of fatigue on the skin thanks to an exclusive combination of makeup and skincare. So I'm gonna mix a pump of that. You can, uh, hopefully you can see it's a little bit more liquidy each, a pump of each on the back of my hand. And then I'm gonna take just a drop of my little secret weapon so that it actually like matches me. This does not manipulate the formula. Okay, so he applied this with like a short handled, um, really dense, like sort of angled kabuki brush. I couldn't find, I know I have something like that in my collection, but I couldn't find one. So I am gonna be using a sponge, but he did make a point to say that you really, really, really wanna press it into the skin. Um, Patrick Ta was there and he made a comment that Ariel really doesn't use like a ton of product, like especially on the skin. He sort of like layers really, really thin amounts. So this is what I mixed up on the back of my hand. I'm gonna be picking that up with my sponge and I'm gonna be pressing this into the skin and I'm really gonna take my time with it. <laughs> and Desi was commenting on the fact that he like really <laughs> presses it into her skin, so. I believe he applied it with a, with a brush first and then um, went over it with a sponge. Well, this foundation looks so beautiful though. A lot of products recently are going more towards like blurring imperfections and adding like a little bit of coverage rather than like full coverage, like matte, you know, something like that. Okay, see this? That's why I don't take my concealer all the way up. But you know, we're, we're testing things today. We're experimenting. Um, and he did make a point to say that spot concealing is more important than trying to build up like a ton of coverage in areas where you have breakouts. So like I have all these breakouts around my temples which won't go away. Hormones, am I right? I'm probably gonna fast forward through this part just because I really want to take my time with it like he did. You know what it smells like? Do you remember when Makeup Forever launched that water foundation? That's what it smells like to me. But I didn't like that really. It, it sort of like, I found that it um, broke up on my skin a lot. Like it didn't mix with moisturizers or primers very well. So I'm wondering if this is kind of like a, I don't know, like a an improvement or like a second version of that maybe? Why do my nostrils not want to hold foundation? That's what I wanna know. That is really beautiful, that foundation. I don't know what you guys think of it. It's definitely not like super full coverage, but it just looks so pretty. I really like it. It's very like lightweight looking on my skin. God damn. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right, for concealer, this is a magical combination, you guys. I am going to mix the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. This is in the shade Chiffon, and I'm gonna be mixing that with the new Becca Concealer. So I'm mixing it with a Light Shifter Brightening Concealer by Becca, and this is in the shade, I really wish I could read this. Emit one. So I'm mixing these two. Becca concealer is like a twist up. Put that on the back of my hand. I'm gonna do the same with the Jouer. I'm just using a little synthetic brush to mix it up. And then I'm gonna be placing this in the areas where I want to highlight. So he didn't like go super hard. He really liked highlighting like this area right here on the forehead. Um, I'm not gonna do the nose yet. Chin, he sort of highlighted like in here, which is what I do as well. He took it like a little bit higher than I usually do. 
and then for under the eyes, so he took it like along the sides of the nose, around the nostril, underneath the eyes, basically like how I do it. Obviously we're taking it higher than I usually do now though. And I'm using my LC Cosmetics Velvet Sponge to blend this out. So he liked to highlight like up here because it's uh, he said that it's sort of like, I'm gonna do the same thing with my contour a little bit. He said that it kind of like helps to lift and create a smile to the face. More like this motion. And then he really liked to highlight right in here, which is like my favorite, like just this little area right here. And he kind of like, when he was using his sponge, he kind of like fanned it like this to focus the product like right in that little area. Do you love this like formula? It adds like a little bit extra coverage to the Becca concealer, but it just like adding the Becca concealer makes the Jouer concealer a little bit more like brightening and illuminating. It's like such a beautiful formula together. And then once again with the concealer, I'm taking it along the sides of the nose and I'm taking it right up, which feels so weird. <laughs> And basically just like trying to focus that product like where you put it. All right, now he used like some, a couple of Makeup Forever, well it was four Makeup Forever, so he used like basically all makeup, no he used all Makeup Forever products. Um, he did do a little bit of cream bronzing, but not cream contouring. So I'm gonna go in, I usually start off with Light Medium Contour Stick by KKW Beauty, but I'm going to be using just Medium, which is the warm shade that I use to bronze. So it's this color right here. Um, and he like sort of did it in like the same way. He used like a slightly softer brush. Let me see if I can find something. Okay, so he used a softer brush. I feel like it was sort of similar-ish to like this vibe. This is the BH number four brush. I don't know what collection this is from. The pretty light pink one. He said he liked to create like a dome around the forehead, around the forehead, like so that you're highlighting this area like we did with the highlighter. So I'm gonna do basically that. So I'm picking this up and um, I'm gonna start off by just kind of like shading here. Something that I noticed was that he had like a very light hand. He held his brushes back like pretty far and sort of like this motion. Like he, he just like looked like he was being very gentle with all of it. And I think that's what like really helps with his, um, with making his blending so seamless. And he really, really took his time. He also didn't do like a ton of spot concealing with like creams. He uh, mostly did it sort of like at the end with powder, which was interesting. She also didn't have like a ton of, a ton of breakouts. So she had like two that were so minuscule. So I'm kind of bronzing the way that I usually do. I'm just like making sure to really gently like feather it towards the area that we highlighted with the concealer. So focusing it like up on the higher points of the forehead. And typically I wouldn't be like doing this motion as much, but he was, <laughs> so we're gonna do that. I think it's kind of like what helped keep his coverage really light. So as I get like closer to the area we highlighted with concealer, I'm really pulling my like, my brush back a little bit and like hardly touching my skin. And back in and kind of just like helping to redefine this brightened area. And then with cheeks, he like did sort of a similar thing. Focus it in here. But then he sort of like swept the bronzer up like that, which he said helped to create like a smile. I don't know how this is gonna work on my face shape because my cheekbones are so different. So I'm gonna kind of like follow my cheekbone here like the way that I usually do it, but then just kind of like sweep that up. So I'm trying to adjust for my face. So like I'm kind of shading like this area, you know, but I'm following my, um, my cheekbone. So we're trying to keep this area bright and darken up here. He also, oh, that was something that was really important. When he was contouring her face, he had her smile because he said that like in photos, most of the time his clients are like smiling. So it just ends up like looking more natural if you 
smile and follow that line rather than like going like that, you know? Um, and I think that's probably how he makes things look so much softer, you know? Like his looks are super blended and really soft and youthful looking rather than like super harsh contours. Um, before we start going in with powders, now I was super surprised that he didn't use any kind of a cream contour. I mean, I'm um, sorry, cream blush, because he did say that he layers his blush, but he layers his powder blush. I was surprised to hear that. So before we go in with uh, any powders, he sort of did like a reverse contour on the nose. So rather than using like a dark shade, he drew like a really bright line straight down the nose and then let it sit for like a while. So I probably should have done that before I started doing my cream bronzer. Now I feel stupid. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use, I'm gonna mix the Born This Way foundation concealer in Swan from Too Faced because it's a little bit lighter with the Becca concealer, just so I have like a little bit more um, whatever. And then what kind of a brush did he use? And actually, this is so perfect. I have this Fenty brush that I like, have been trying to figure out like what to do with it. It's the Precision 220 brush. This guy, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? I don't really know. I guess like maybe spot conceal, but it looks a lot like the brush that he used. Um, again, he was using all Makeup Forever products, but I don't really have, I think I have like two Makeup Forever brushes. So anyway, I'm mixing that up on the back of my hand. And then he like, what looked straight on and Drew a straight line all the way down the nose. And I remember being like, there's no way I can do this. But I feel like I went um, too right heavy because my nose is crooked and it's hard. Well, now it's too thick, I think. Fuck, I don't know, you guys. And then he sort of like did this. And then he let that sit for like a while before he blended it out. So I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna take a, a little bit more concealer and put it underneath my eyes just cause you know how I do. I need a little bit more coverage. So I'm actually gonna do that. Should I use that same fucking concealer? Yeah, I guess I will. But just a little bit, not too much. I kinda feel like this process is actually faster than what I do. So now I'm just focusing it like right there. So before I blend that out, he used a powder foundation for Makeup Forever, the Velvet Skin Foundation. I have one somewhere, but it's too dark. So he used that to set underneath the eyes and I'm terrified of this step. Absolutely terrified, especially with like how high we brought up my concealer. So I'm gonna be using the Urban Decay Stay Naked The Fix. This is in shade 20WY, which I think will work. This is like the best powder foundation. It's a, a better match for me than the MAC Studio Fix in NC10. This is a little too light and too neutral. Um, and also I've tried this a couple times and it's just like very heavy. So, so we're gonna blend this out. And he used a sponge to apply it. This is sort of like tap it out. Tap it on me. <laughs> and then I'm gonna turn my sponge. And I'm gonna pick up this product. Oh, I'm so fucking nervous about this because I feel like this has never worked for me before. Put it out. Oh, shit. He took it like pretty high up the sides of the nose. Because like I said, he reversed contours. That actually looks like flawless as fuck. Doesn't it? Looks so like bright. I'm so afraid that it's gonna crease. All right, let's do the other side. We look really bright, huh? Well, so far so good. But I just like, I'm looking at it and it still looks like really, um, yeah, I just feel like I'm gonna get so much creasing. I'm so scared. Oh, I'm scared of the situation. All right, now I'm going to um, blend out my nose and I think he used a brush. I can't remember now, actually. I'm just gonna kind of like, Lightly blend and then I'll go in with a sponge. He definitely did a thinner line than what I've done here. I mean, like this part looks like very, very soft, but I'm just scared. Anyway, okay, let's finish off um, whatever I was just doing on my face using this new angled hourglass brush. And now I'm going in with the clean Huda Beauty sponge, just like the tip of it. So I don't really think I got the same effect that he did. 
because I think I made my line way too big and it just kind of made my nose look like Squidward, but it's fine. Uh, we'll figure it out in the end. He did contour with some powder like later on. So um, I guess we'll set the face now. Uh, so what he did was he went in with another powder foundation and or translucent powder. And he, he applied powder all over the face to set everything. And what he, Folk, what he like his main focus was again really pressing it into the skin and he used a powder puff so I'm actually going to be using the Tati the new Tati Beauty powder puff thing admittedly I have not watched her video yet on how to use this I don't know if this is supposed to be for like just powder or for like foundation yet so I still have to watch that but I thought it's a powder puff and I'm doing this video so I may as well use this for the powder so I'm gonna be using the big one and I'm applying the Smashbox Photo Finish Fresh Setting Powder. This is in shade number one. And it's actually like, for, first of all, it's fucking cool packaging. This is supposed to look like a camera, like lens case. And then when you open it up, this is really hard to show you, but you twist it and then it, it pops up fresh powder, which is nice. So the color is really, really good. Um, I'm just gonna twist <laughs> using this powder puff, dip it in the powder, and then basically just gonna be pressing it all into the skin. That might be a little dark, actually. Okay, that's uh, kind of dark. Fuck! So, JK, I'm gonna use, it's a little dark, it's a little orange. I'm gonna use the Kylie Cosmetics Translucent Setting Powder since I use this all the time to set my face. I don't know why I decided to, um, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna use that instead. It's fine, that, that area was kind of like bronzy to begin with anyway, so it's fine. It's fine. And he literally did this to the entire face, which like powder really terrifies me. Like I've, I've watched, I remember watching um, like Patrick Starr put powder all over his face and I was like, I don't understand how you can make it look so like flawless, but I guess that's what powder is for. I don't know. We're all very shh, confused. We're all confused. Um, and then I'm gonna do the sides, like my nose too, cause you know. It seems like it's really big, but it actually, um, you have like a lot of, it's very flexible. So you have like a lot of uh, control over it. Um, and then to, to like cover up breakouts, he sort of like layered powder. I don't know if that's really gonna work though. So yeah, so that's unfortunate because we went in with that Smashbox powder and it like made, darkened this area so much. Um, so that's really cool. So he, okay. So I've been pouncing for like a really long time, but he like really, really made a big deal about pressing the powder into the face. Um, since I went in with that Smashbox powder and kind of like ruined my cheeks, I'm gonna take a small amount of it and just kind of press it like in the warmer areas of my face so that we can kind of like, hopefully balance that. So like around my temples where I have some breakouts, maybe that can add a little bit extra coverage. I don't know, man, we're winging it. Yeah, I'm really worried about all the creasing that we have under our eyes. I'm gonna bake, cause he did. Um, my favorite powder to bake with is the Elsie Cosmetics Light Medium Translucent Setting Powder. This color right here. It's really beautiful and he also was like don't feel like you have to bake like put, put so much powder down to bake because we've already set our face with powder so like don't go in with like way like way too much so i'm just trying to figure out like how i should um apply this so for my nose i'm gonna i'm actually gonna use the side of the tati thing whatever the, i don't know what this is called no, I'm not, just kidding, that's way too big. Fuck, what did he use? I can't remember, I feel like he used the powder puff, but maybe he used a brush. I'm gonna use, for my cheeks, I'm gonna use the Hank and Henry Nikki brush, this like angled foundation brush. And he stamped it like along um, underneath the cheekbone. Then what he did was, rather than bringing it like straight to the mouth, he kind of like brought it up like this to hug that cheekbone to like in, uh, enhance the smile. So my cheekbones kind of go like that. So I'm going like that a little bit and then following this 
one. And then he baked like a little bit on the chin, but he really didn't put that much powder down. He put like, he was using like a lighter powder, but he just kind of like did that sort of thing, you know? So it didn't look like super heavy and caked. For my under eyes, I'm gonna use that same hourglass, this like hourglass angled brush. Did he do the forehead? I think he did. Just a little bit though. He sort of did like this situation where like he was kind of like pressing the powder like in that area. It didn't look like, it didn't look like a ton of powder, you know? And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my under eyes. He kind of placed it like, stamped it along the side of the nose, under the eyes, like brightening up this area and using it to carve out the nose. He said he took it up like kind of high. Um, and then I'm gonna do down the center of my nose, but I'm just trying to figure out like what to use for that. I guess I'm gonna use my sponge. So I'm gonna pick up quite a bit because he, he really like brightened up the nose. I'm gonna try to, <laughs> I'm gonna try to make this line thinner. All right, so now while I'm baking, I'm going to contour. Um, so he used, she's very warm. So he used like a Makeup Forever foundation powder. I'm gonna be using the Dior uh, Backstage Contour Palette. I'm gonna be using the light shade. This color, you guys have seen this before. To apply that, I'm using the Strobe L307 brush. This is from Stilazi. Um, and then I'm gonna be following like kind of where I put that powder, the baking powder. And then, like I said, he sort of like swept it up. Oh, do you see all that powder in my ear? <laughs> How did that happen? That's awkward. So I'm kind of like focusing it in that line, like right in between the line where we placed the uh, baking powder. And then I'm, when I get in here, I'm kind of like sweeping it up. So he really liked to like define the round part of the cheek. And he used the word youthful a lot. So in terms of like his placement of products, how he hugs the cheeks, yeah, whatever. And once he had his powder down, I noticed that he was like doing this a lot, like kind of like dragging the brush a lot. And I think once you put the powder down, it kind of like allows you to get away with more um, of that motion, it kind of helps with like the blending. Cause you're not like, you're not going over wet skin at all, so, um, I don't know. I'm gonna do my, I gotta do my jawline. Um, he did Desi's a little bit differently. She's got like a sharp, sharp jaw. I'm gonna do the huge, but just using powder. So what I like to do is kind of make a double chin and then come to where the area, I didn't realize I had this breakout here, otherwise I would have uh, concealed it. So I'm kind of focusing the con darkest part of the contour like underneath, and then I'm gonna slowly kind of like bring it upward so that it's kind of like going like that a little bit. Okay, I do wanna contour my lips a little bit. He didn't do this, but is this just something that I do like, I just love the way it looks. So I'm doing it with powder. So I'm using that same shade and this light brush and just kind of going like around my lips. Basically doing what I did in like my video if you haven't seen it, it's somewhere. And then I'm gonna do the same thing underneath a little bit. And then for my nose, cause he did contour the nose with powder. Um, he really just kind of like did this motion. So he went along really lightly all along the side of where he um, baked and then blended. But he, he wasn't like super duper precise with it. You know, like it didn't look like he was like, he was just kind of like doing this. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then he kind of like scooped underneath. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of blush or I'm gonna do, I guess my first, no. Should I dust this powder away? I guess I'll dust the powder away. <laughs> so I'm using my little Mac brush and basically just gonna use a really light hand and I guess rather than like dusting it away, cause we don't really have that much on. I'm just kind of blending it into the skin using just like a really light hand. I mean, my face does look pretty smooth, 
I feel like I definitely didn't do enough like spot, like I probably should have done spot concealing before I went in with the powder. I'm not super wild about this nose contour. Kind of like trying to soften it. Um, okay, so for my blush, I'm gonna use Kylie Cosmetics. I love Kylie Cosmetics Crush. This is like such a pretty flattering color. I use it for basically everything. So I'm going to apply that with my, whatever this is, Japanese, I think. And he did, he did two layers of blush, like two applications basically. And he focused it like right here, but he said he like brings it like kind of high up into the under eye. So like, it's sort of like so much higher than you would have thought. He pressed it like right in this, like it's almost above the, wow, okay. Like for real. Um, it was almost like above the apples of the cheeks. And again, he said the reason that he does this is because he loves like how youthful it looks. Like it really just like lifts. And I was like a little bit skeptical just because of like the shape of my face, but he said he basically does this application the same on everyone. What I'm doing, and he actually said he prefers that, this like placement over like putting it up here. Um, so what I'm doing is now I'm gonna go in with my second pass and I'm gonna kind of like just blend it like out here just a little bit because I don't have those big round cheekbones. So I feel like it needs to be blended like just a little. Um, and he said, the reason that he does two applications of blush, like it might seem like a lot, but like he's doing, obviously doing makeup for like red carpets and stuff like that. So he said blush is like the first thing to fade. So he likes to kind of go in on the blush um, because once his clients get to the red carpet, he knows that like that color is gonna last and then he's not gonna have to do touch-ups, which was interesting. Um, so I'm basically like going up under my under eye, like into my under eye, just like, Blending really gently to like this part, not bringing it up like how I usually do. It does look super airbrushed. Okay, well, let's do highlight. And then I'm gonna finish off a couple things. So to highlight, I'm gonna be using this shade from Pure. This is the Afterglow highlighter. This is just like really beautiful. Look at how much creasing we have under my eyes. I'm just like really nervous. And like, obviously I'm gonna be going in there with eyeshadow, but I'm just scared. Okay, so first I'm gonna do my nose cause that's like what I remember most of all from him. And I'm using this little brush from Wayne Goss. This is the 20 brush. And I'm going to basically do the same thing down the nose that he did with like the baking powder. So you're drawing kind of like a, just a straight line down the nose. And then he sort of let it get a little bit wider up here. And then for the tip of the nose, um, rather than like bringing it all the way down, he just like, little button. Right on the tip, he said he brings it like just a little bit higher on the tip. And then he didn't really talk that much about highlight, honestly, he didn't like talk about it. Um, but I have watched videos where he did, I think it was Shea Mitchell's makeup. And he said he brings the highlight like here because he said the top of the cheekbone is actually like right here, like the high point of the cheekbone rather than bringing it like up here. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And I'm using my Wayne Goss, what is this? Whatever this brush is. <laughs> I'm gonna kinda like do this. Yeah, I'm a little actually upset that he didn't talk too much about highlight because I would have liked to hear like what his thoughts are on it now. Like how far I should bring it down onto the cheeks and everything. Kylie always has like a really beautiful highlight, but it always looks very like seamless and not super like intense a lot of the time. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here, I think. Just a little bit right here. And then I'm pretty sure I watched him do it on the tip of the, like right here on the chin. Um, all right, I'm going to finish off the eyes and the brows and I'll be right back. So I finished off with the House of Lashes iconic Lux, bomb, new ones, fly, love them. Um, and I like finished off my brows and all of that. So now I'm going to do the, no, I'm gonna set my face now. So we're gonna set all of this powder um, before I finish off my lips. I'm trying to figure out what powder I want or what, I think I'm gonna use this guy actually from Glow Recipe, the Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist because it's, we're very matte right now, so.
and he hit the whole face, but he definitely like focused it on this side, you know? Not that side, but you know what I mean. All right, and then for lips, what he did was he overlined, but he focused most of the overlining like up here um, rather than like on the sides. And then, uh, well, I'll show you the rest. So I'm gonna use um, Topist by Lime Crime. I'm rushing right now because I am losing the light outside. If I look panicky, that's why. I really wanna get some photos in natural light. And he like really overlined this part. So I'm still kind of overlining the outer part, but I'm bringing it down a little bit more. So it's kind of like sweeping in. For the my lipstick, I'm gonna go into the center. This is Doll Face from Too Faced. It's just kind of like a really light peachy shade. I'm gonna go, just kind of like pat this all over. It's really pretty. And then what he did, which is kind of like, this really surprised me actually, he used a darker lip liner. Um, I'm gonna use Paris from Kylie Cosmetics. And he like outlined the lips, like legit like 90s outlined the lips. And then he feathered like the outer corners. Like darkened up that area. And then he used a brush. I'm going to use the MAC 228S brush to blend it all. Okay, sorry. I had to get up and take photos in the sun because I'm losing it. Um, but fuck, I love it. The only thing is, I definitely fucked up the nose contour, but everything else is like fantastic. I'm like actually surprised at how the lips look because when he was doing it, I was like, damn, that's super 90s, but I don't know. Maybe I didn't blend as well as I could have, but this is basically how they make all those celebrities' lips look like huge. Huge and in charge. I definitely got some on the bottom of my nose just then. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty into it. I think I'm gonna start using translucent powder like all over my face with the powder puff. Also, great timing, Tati. Tati with the puffs. It's just like, it just looks like very smooth. I think I need like some time to really perfect it. But what I'm so amazed by is typically at this point in my makeup, I feel like I get, I've already gotten like creasing in my smile lines and stuff like that. And I don't see any of that. Like I am smooth. So pretty nice. If you are like me and you have light to fair olive skin, the Kylie Cosmetics Translucent Powder is great. And if you're really fair and you're looking for something that you need to bake, because like there's just so many powders out there that either look like way too gray or they're just not light enough, the LC Cosmetics Light Medium Setting Powder is so good for our translucent powder, sorry. It's so good for baking fair skin. All right, guys, that's it. That is what I learned from Ariel. I'm hoping that I remembered everything. That's pretty much what it was. He, like I said, he did a lot. I'm like pretty amazed by the under eyes too. Like once I went in with my eyeshadow, I feel like I'm not really getting, like for me, it looks a little bit powdery, but I don't know. I think mostly it's going to be like practice, you know? I'm gonna have to wear this. I'm gonna wear this the rest of the day just because it's stunningly beautiful. I love it, especially the eyes. And um, I did post a mini tutorial of the eyeshadow on TikTok. So if you don't follow me on TikTok, go check that out. I slightly hate myself when I say that, but I basically just post like little makeup videos. I don't, rude. I don't lip sync and dance, just so we're all clear. Okay, my battery is going to die. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a little something too. Don't be too afraid of powders. You just gotta use it the right way, apparently, according to Ariel. Uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions, comments, suggestions, comments down below, whatever. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. My lips do look like huge right now though. These lashes, shit. I need to, I need to, man, nose contours are never easy for me. 
trying to drink anything when you have lipstick on, stop.